Now let's have a look at Affinity Publisher Mastering the Magazine. This is creating a 50 page magazine in Affinity Publisher. We're going to be setting up a 50 page magazine with presets and the AF pub file will be available on my website. Now I'm not going to complete all 50 pages of the magazine. Um, we'd be here for hours otherwise because it is a big job doing 50 pages. But I'm going to set up the three master pages and we'll use those master pages on a couple of the content pages uh, for the start of the magazine and I'll just give you an idea of how you set up magazine pages. It's really quite straightforward and I do believe you shouldn't be fearful of it. So let's jump right in and have a look. Now there's some notes on master page names in this exercise. The first master page is blank. Well it's called blank and it's a single page. There are two magazine body master pages named Light Footer and Dark Footer respectively. It will become obvious later. But one's a, the Light Footer goes on dark pages and the Dark Footer goes on light pages. In all there are three master pages and 50, 50 body pages to the magazine. The setting up of these master pages can be a little tricky, especially for a beginner, so take your time. There are certain little hidden settings here and there. Well, they appear to be hidden, but they're really not. The magazine pages contain advertising and copy, and as I mentioned, not all of them are completed. I urge you to remember to switch between preview mode and margin and bleed display mode regularly. To check your document readability. If you turn on margin and bleed display, preview mode will turn off. If you turn on preview mode, the other two will turn off. So you go backwards and forwards with them. So let's begin. Open Publisher and begin a new document and I'll show you how to set up a preset so you can produce a 50 page magazine anytime you like. Regularly, once a month perhaps as the, as the um, club magazine comes out. So select my presets for setting up the document. And you'll see that there, my presets. I've already got a few presets in there and there's the one we're working on today. Enter the, the layout settings as you see them here. Now take your time, there's a lot of them. Now you'll notice I've got the document in centimetres. Now there's a little trap for unwary players here. <laughs> if you normally work in millimetres and you suddenly switch to centimetres, you'll end up with a problem that I'll show to you later on as we, as we get to the master pages. Because you can type in 10 millimetres, thinking you're in millimetres, when you're actually in centimetres. So your margins will be 10, mil 10 centimetres and not millimetres. It can get confusing. So beware and remember you're in centimetres. In portrait mode, you can prefer embedded or you can prefer linked. Now, linked images can be a problem if you move them about on your computer. You, you might be one of these people who likes to continually rearrange your images and photos and you move them from this drive to that drive, from this folder to that folder as you look for room. If your images are linked in a, an Affinity Publisher document, it will lose the link. Publisher won't follow where you put those photos. So if they're not too bad, you can use embedded if they're not too big. Um, and even if they are, and it'll come up and warn you and say, you've got too many images in your document. Do you want to compress them or link them? You can continually um, apply them and just move happily on. You'll just end up with a really big file. Um, so with a 50 page magazine, perhaps you've got January, February, March, April, May, everything goes in the same folder and stays there. And that way you can use linked. Um, sometimes it's a personal preference and sometimes not. 50 page magazine 
default master, facing pages, arranged horizontally, and you're starting on the right. Although it doesn't really matter in this case, but you're starting on the right. CMYK, because you're probably going to print. Don't include transparent background. Include margins. One centimetre. <laughs> Remember, it's centimetres, so it's one, ten, one centimetre. If you're working in millimetres, then it's ten millimetres. 0.3 centimetres is 3 millimetres. Okay, so that's fairly easy. When you've done all that, click on the plus sign. That creates a new preset. And that puts it over here, and that will be called Untitled. And it will appear here in the grey pane. Now you right-click on that preset, and you can rename it, and I renamed it to 50 Page Magazine. And you click OK and you then have your preset. Now you click on the preset, if it's not already in, in highlight mode, then you go down here. When you click on that, it will put the name there. Don't try and put the name there, put it here, and when you click on it, it will automatically appear there. That can be a bit of a trap if you go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. If you make a mistake over here, just right click on that and delete it. Go make your alterations, Press the plus sign, go back, rename it, um, etc, etc. And then when you're ready, you click on Create. And up comes your new document. Setting up the document after making the preset. First, we will create the master pages required. You can see it's already created master pages, master A, and so on. And the pages, pages... 1 through to 50. There are three master pages and 50 document pages in this sample. Naturally, they won't all display here because there's too many of them. Now, remember I said about using centimetres and millimetres? Oddly enough, I'm used to working in millimetres. So, in <laughs> I wanted a 10 millimetre border but I was in centimetres, and I put a 10 centimetre border. So that's 10 centimetres there, 10 centimetres there, there and there, and ended up with the square in the middle. Well, now the layers for the master pages are minimal. Indeed, there are no additions to the blank page, and only small footers in the other two pages. And I've renamed them to blank, light footer, and dark footer. Now, setting up the single and facing masters. If When you first create it, you will end up with three double-sided master pages there, master A, B and C. Now, select master A, double-click on it, then right-click and select spread properties from the drop-down menu that you will see. These are your spread properties appearing here. Select single, because it'll default to face, facing, because you will originally have two pages here. And you can also see here a result of me working in, thinking in millimetres when I'm working in centimetres. That's the bleed. That should be 0.3 centimetres, but in fact it turns out to be quite different. I go back and change that because you can change that in spread settings, in document settings. Okay, sidetrack there, select single. When you leave that page, it will revert to single. So you click OK and the single blank page will appear here. Rename your masters to blank, light footer and dark footer. That's pretty straightforward. If you get it wrong, just experiment. Go backwards and forwards. Now we move on to light footer. Double click on this one. Starting with the left footer. It's, it's, it's a tricky bit, as I mentioned here, and, and a bit hard to get your head around to start with. And you can see over here are the measurements. Now I'll make that a bit clearer in the next slide or two. This is a rectangle with a grey fill, and it's the same on both sides. That little thing there, it's a tiny rectangle made with the 
made with the rectangle tool, which is somewhere up here. There, the thing with the blue in it. Okay, and you want a rectangle. It's a shape tool. Don't use a picture frame or a text frame. It's actually a rectangular shape. And it's grey fill, no stroke, no width, nothing like that. Just grey fill in this case. So when you create it, it will, it will appear to be grey. Ignore the inner rectangles. That's what I spoke about before when I screen copied these, these um, images. I still had the margins set in, <laughs> set the 10 centimetres and not one centimetre. Okay, let's move on. We don't want to dwell on my mistakes. Now the footer sidebar, dark footer and light footer, are both the same. The content are the same except slightly different. Starting with the left footer, and tricky bit here, the left footer, and this is the one in the dark footer, it has an orange fill, not a grey fill. So I've created that there. It's just a vertical bar, and you can put that in or not. It's up to you. It's just a piece of dressing that looks nice. Now, in this case, it's got an orange fill. It appears very faintly on the page. In the light footer, you've got grey or white fill in the rectangle. Stroke and width and nil as before, and it's the same on both sides of your document, left and right, only mirror image, of course, flipped over. The dark footer, as I mentioned before, is a yellow or orange fill in the little rectangle. Stroke and width nil, same both sides. I'll give you the measurements momentarily. Where, they, where it actually goes in this document. And of course, if you download the master from my website, um, it'll be there for you to see. Now, the footer's dimensions on the left side, light footer, grey fill, up there you can see there, grey fill, vertical bar, same both sides. Now, that little vertical bar, its measurements are there. You can see its width is only 0.16 centimetres. It's not very wide at all. And it's positioned just there. Its X and Y positions are just there. You can see them there, two rectangles and two texts. We'll get to the text bar shortly. Now, the right side, that little footer bar, we're still talking grey fill. And there's its XY position. And there's its width, slightly different, and height. I've just noticed that it's slightly different to the one over here, but that's all right. You can see the grey bar there. That's easily fixable. I can make that whatever I like. Just go backwards and forwards and correct your mistakes, as I do. Now, setting up the footers, text and page numbers, you can see the text area there. That's the text rectangle. Insert a page number right there, right in the left-hand corner. Then the magazine name, and here I've called it magazine. How very original. Actually, the title of the on the cover that I make is called Parkour. And in there, I would probably have parkour. But for now, it's magazine. There's no mistaking, that's the magazine title. It's white text. It's orange here so you can see it. Aligned left. And repeat on the right-hand side, but aligned right. Magazine, then page number. So you put the word magazine in, and the page number's there. The page number's there. And then you align these... So they go where you want them, and they look neat both sides. That one's in highlight. You can see its location there. And I've still got my <laughs> dodgy margins. I do eventually fix that, I can assure you. Now here's the right side, text and page numbers. Again, this is the light footer. The dark footer is exactly the same um, for, that, for that matter. It's just that... On the light footer, the images are 
invisible, if you like, the text because they're white. Insert page number, then the magazine name, here called magazine. Now white text, it's, it's orange here to see it, and the line right, magazine, then page inserted. Uh, well, it's not, a, it's not orange here because um, I changed it and didn't change the text. Never mind, you get what I mean. Light footer and dark footer text and page numbers. The text frames contain page number aligned left and right. There we go, left and aligned left and aligned right. Name and page number, name and page number. Light and dark footers contain white text and dark text respectively. Why is that? The light footers go on dark pages and the dark footers go on light pages. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Setting up the pages, what your new project looks like. Now we're finished with master pages and we're on to pages. I've just clicked the little down arrow there and it's displayed all the pages. You can leave them as they are, page numbers 1 through 50. Now, setting up the cover page, phase 1. This is to show the cover page to start with. And you can see the work I've done on there. You can see the bleed and margins and the cover graphic overrun. Now you can see there's your overrun. Not anything outside that line won't be printed. It doesn't matter that the image is wider than that because it won't be printed. That's cut off. Each text element is created with artistic text and formatted so it aligns correctly with the border. Everything else is trimmed at printing time. You can see there's the margins and everything aligns neatly with that. They're text files, text areas I should say. That one's been converted, the word group, that's that parkour, that's been converted to curves and then grouped with the add function as we saw earlier on. There's your there's a background image I'm not using and I'll come to that because there's the image I am using. Now, title converted to curves. Parkour, the magazine title. Click Add to compress to one curve layer. You can see I've got the group there, Parkour. That's the title. Now, if you highlight all those and click on that in your toolbar, the plus sign, it will add them all together and create that Parkour on one group. So you haven't got all those individual curves that you could accidentally uh, mess up. Click on the Geometry Add option to compress the Curves layer into one layer. If you haven't got Geometry on your toolbar, you can go to your existing, right click on your toolbar and you can modify it so you can add the Geometry tools to, to it and you can put that one there. It comes in very useful. Now that's not mandatory. This is something I did to show you how it's done. Now we're nearly done, really. The front page is nearly ready, or is it? Now you can see I've got preview mode on. There are no boundaries, no margins, nothing like that. That's how your cover will look printed out. But maybe we can use a different cover. Which one have I got on? I've got the first one. There's the second one is actually unticked, so it's not showing. Obviously you don't want both of them on at the same time. The next page shows an alternate cover. And there it is. Quite a different um, arrangement, really. It sits over the top of the other one, because that's here. In the end, the cover is up to you, of course, as is the content. So when all said and done, that's your choice. The, the chap that's upside down here in the middle of a parkour roll 
Here's actually been extracted from the original image and then placed over the top of the other image. But in between the title and that, over the top. So, it, so he actually appears over the top of the title, parkour. And yet that bit of wording there is written on his leg. So it's above him. And that you can do with, um, if you have Affinity, that was done in Affinity Photo, extracting the chap there. And that's fairly straightforward. That's not something I'll get into here, but if you want to do that kind of thing, it's really nice to have Affinity Photo running when you see it up in the bar with your Affinity Publisher. Now, setting up advertising pages. Page 2 and 3 in this example is an advertising page. Apply the blank master to page 2 and 3. This is a two-page advertising spread. You don't want any footers or anything on it. No fancy work because you're going to dress this page yourself. Specified pages, 2 and 3, and apply the master blank. And when you click on OK, it will apply the blank master to this page or to these two pages, actually. Applying masters to page two and three, note, note, both sides are blank. So when you hover on there, it tells you what master you are using. So it's got blank, blank. That's page two blank, page three blank. No master, well, blank master, if you like. Now, what I've put on there is a picture of a young man with a backpack on. And there it is there. And some text there, 20, backpack 20, 20, backpack 20. That's an artistic text field, and that's an art, te art, art text field. Obviously, that page is not yet complete, but that's a start. You just lay your image straight on the page. There we go. The advert placed and the product named Backpack. Backpack I've converted to Curves. Now why would you want to convert it to Curves? Because you can then possibly print that out any size without, if that's quite small text, it's going to become jagged and horrible if it's done um, in pixel mode. But as a curve, it's, it's um, shall we say, SVG mode. And it's a vector. So you don't have to worry about it going jaggy if its size changes, if you decide to change the size. Now, gradients applied. You can, you might remember that was just a plain image over there, but I wanted to give it a bit of, hmm, a bit of darkness. So I've overlaid it with a rectangle whose color is black, but then I've applied a gradient to it so it fades to black rather than, rather than black right across. Of course, you wouldn't see it then. And it just looks a bit more um, dramatic. Now you can see there page two and three complete. You can see the picture frame that the image is sitting in because I've got all of the, oh, that one there I didn't. I thought I had them all expanded so you can see their content. There's a picture frame with the backpacker in it. And there's advertising, 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 part of the same thing. A bit of lorem ipsum text put in there so you can see it. You can see it's within the boundaries still, right on the boundaries, because there's your bleed boundary. That will be cut off. Depending on your printer, that won't be. And if you want to make sure that it doesn't get cut off along there, then you just move that little rectangle up slightly so it's within 
the borders within the margins. Now the next page is page four and five. The outlines here, almost complete. You can see the number of text frames, various picture frames, and a couple of blanks. Now the, the text frames, I've got flowing text. I've typed the text into, a, into another document and actually this text here is from Wikipedia about cycling. What is cycling? It's also called bicycling or biking. Blah blah blah. Because you can see this article is about, this is an article in the magazine, an example article, and it's about the, it's about the ride. And the text flows across those um, text frames. Be careful if you've got more text than you need that you don't flow it outside the frame because if you do it will automatically create frames through the rest of your pages which you'll then have to spend ages going along and deleting. Now it's almost complete this page. It does look a bit spartan but it's an article and it's an example. So I've got the bike placed in there. I've got the man placed in there. Both of them cut from different backgrounds and black and white applied to them in that case and the cycle is masked out so that there's just the cycle there. Again using Affinity Photo um, in, the, in the Affinity Photo Persona in Publisher. Now the Persona is not showing there because it's normally up there and I've trimmed the, um, trimmed the screen grab below it. Now the next thing I did taken the text here and wrapped the text, expanded it here to fill the page a bit because it's quite blank and then wrapped the text around the chap here so that it's, and it gives it a ragged edge and it looks like it fits. It makes it more personal if you like than just having him standing out on his own because the original was there and it looked clunky. But here it is, nicely wrapped and pretty close to the, to the man standing there looking out at the camera. And that's fairly easy to do. Wrapping text. In fact, I've done a video on that. And there's many videos. And also, Affinity tell you how to do that anyway. If you go to the Help menu in Affinity Publisher and, and look up Text Wrapping, it will tell you there just how to do that. And it's a few... A few clicks of the mouse and the job is done. Now, nearly there. Editorial copy and images, page six and seven, dark master pages. Now, what I've done here, I've you can see there. There's the master's been applied to these two pages, and the dark master applied. There's text frames and the dark footer, two pages. Now I haven't filled those in because it's up to you what you want to put in them. I'm not doing, well you can put anything there. They're just example text frames. You could have anything there. I want to emphasize I'm not doing the entire magazine. We'd be here for a week because it does take a long time to put a magazine together. Ask any publisher. Okay, next page. Page 8 and 9, right there, I'm going to put, this is a dark page, I'm going to put an advertisement on here that's, a, that's quite dark so that it uses a light footer on both pages. So you'll apply, to this you'll apply the light footer master. Pages 8 and 9, the advertisement, not complete, is quite dark and you can see it's quite dark. So down here is where we put, because your master page is applied to it, and that applies your master page there. The borders, the boundaries, and the text magazine there and there. The picture is in there within the boundaries. 
that's that's an example of an advertisement or a feature page something like that that's quite dark and, and to the a dark image like that you apply the light footer save your work because we're finished well we're finished this bit if you take on building your magazine and I wish you every success it's going to take you ages so don't rush it take your time rushed work looks like it's rushed this is why some magazines take a month to come out because it takes a month to do them 100% complete thank you for watching notes on the exercise I haven't completed all 50 pages as you can see they're basically repetitive and you will do your own in any case what I have done I hope is show you how to use master pages to make it easier to dress content pages and how to make use of the photo and designer personas as well assuming you have those installed and at their prices I don't see why you wouldn't it makes life very easy the complete document as you see it can be found on my website at that address too easy and there's a lot of other stuff there you might be able to use as well and remember to subscribe and like my channel on YouTube I really appreciate your your um, doing that makes my life worth living <laughs> I'm easily pleased now off to the corner shop let's have a nice meal